This is just a general look over of the scope. At the end of the review portion of this video, there will be a few hunt clips, so stay tuned to the end. This is the RIX T20 Digital Night Vision Scope. I've been field testing this unit for RIX for roughly three months now, and I got about 100 hours of hunt time. So with that being said, this will be my 100 hour review. First and foremost, chamber flag, no magazine, firearm is on safe. I'd like to talk about some of the features in this unit that I like, um, that's kind of stuck out to me, but I'm not gonna to dive too deep into the full specifications of the scope. If you want that, you can get it right off at RIX's website. First is IP68 rating. That means this unit is water resistant for 30 minutes, submersed in like one and a half meters of water. So around five feet. I mean, this is America. So let's use feet. Um, that means that this is gonna be able to stand elements most people aren't gonna to wanna to hunt in. I know I personally have hunted in some pretty rough downpours and I carry a little blow bulb with me that if you're in photography, you know what I'm talking about, just blow off the ocular and objective lenses just to keep from scratching them, keep hunting. Um, so that's a really nice feature. Another one is the 1500G shock rating. That means that you can put this unit you know, on a 450 Bushmaster or 308 Winchester. I probably come deer season, I will probably put this on my 450 Bushmaster just to kind of get some footage and I've really got to enjoy the scope. Um, another feature on this unit is the wide focus ring here. So this one's about four fingers wide on my hand. Uh, it's got a pretty good grip to it. And the reason I like this is when the scope's wet or it's just cold, your hands are cold, you can adjust this focus without having to try and grab a very narrow, which I know some manufacturers have that very narrow focus ring. And that, that just can be kind of aggravating, especially if it doesn't have a throw lever. So going to some of the um, areas on the scope, first will be the right side, which has the USB-C charging port and SD card. I think it holds like a 256 gig SD card, so you can record a lot of footage on 256 gigs. The uh, USB-C charging port is right here. With that being said, that means that this unit does have an internal battery. It does not have swappable batteries. I haven't had any concerns with battery life on this unit. I'm in Eastern North Carolina. I've hunted down to below freezing uh, temperatures, which typically reduces battery life, and I haven't had any concerns about running out of battery. Uh, most of the time, our sits are six, maybe eight hours. Now that is putting this in a standby mode and moving from place to place, but even at that point, I haven't had any concerns to carry other batteries with me like I have with other units. Uh, on the left side of the scope will be the focus, I'm sorry, will be the zoom and the menu button on off button. The zoom is rather tactile. Uh, it's got a good detent in it. You can really feel it um, move through the zoom uh, increases and decreases. I normally run this on three and a half power. I, it's a digital night vision. So as you increase in zoom, your resolution decreases. So I normally stay on three and a half base and run the picture in picture, which this unit has on uh, four or five X. So I, I don't really touch this very often. So I, I don't have a lot of feedback here. Um, on the top of the unit is the on off button, the day night mode, and then on the other side of the record. Now this scope does have recoil activated uh, recording on it. So it will record if turned on a few seconds before and a few seconds after the shots taken. I know Rick's is having some problems currently with getting the recoil activated video off the scope onto your phone, but you can still take the SD card out and put it in your computer and get the footage without any issues. Uh, I know they're working on doing an update and I'm sure that'll release pretty soon. So I wouldn't let that be too concerning. Um, one thing I have had some problems with, and this is pretty simple, is the bellow eyepiece comes off really easy. Um, just kind of be aware of that. Uh, I've lost it every once in a while, just kind of pay attention to it. Really truthfully, I'll probably just super glue this up there. Um, you do notice that on this unit, I don't have the factory IR. I hunt a lot of big open areas where I'm needing to look and identify animals at five, 600 yards. The factory IR light that Rick supplies with this unit is a 940. Um, it's a 
pretty good but with that being said this is something i would say is limited to 100 150 yards uh, for identification of uh, like a good identification of animals so just kind of keep that in mind um, when you're getting into something like this now with that being said if you guys want to see a comparison of what i currently run like you see in my videos which is a coyote cannon uh, versus the factory hour i'll be more than happy to take some pictures at whatever distances you want just to kind of show you what you're getting into that, that's not an issue uh, this hour mounts you can mount it to the picatinny rail on the gun if you want to but rick supplies 30 millimeter scope rings with this optic and there are pick mounts on all three sides of the front mount so you can do it on the side top or the other side whichever works best for you um, it is supplied with two uh 18650s for the hour light and a charger so you don't have to worry about killing one battery and not be able to talk to another overall i'm pretty impressed with this uh, i know i've been field testing this unit uh, my plan is honestly to buy this one i'll keep it on a buddy gun uh, i've don't have any complaints overall i've run several other competitors and there's some features about those i don't like i do like the the app rick's app is really nice it's easy to use you just connect to the scope via Wi-Fi on your phone and you can do live view. You can pull everything off of it. This unit does have uh, a microphone in it. That's kind of cool, especially if you want to go back and listen to some conversations in the middle of a hunt. Uh, I've done that a few times, but overall I I've thoroughly enjoyed it. If you got any questions about this, uh, feel free to reach out to me. If there's some video footage that you'd like to see, whether it's daytime or nighttime, I'd be more than happy to go take it. Uh, I'm typically on this two or three times a week uh, hunting at night. I don't have a lot of daytime footage right now. Uh, it's, there's no season currently in North Carolina, um, but I could be more than happy to go take some daytime comparison footage, you know, at certain distances if, if you guys would like, just so you could see uh, what it looks like during the day for anybody who wants to use this more of a daytime scope than a nighttime scope. So if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me, shoot me a comment, shoot me a message, and uh, I'll be able to help you out. Have a good one. In this clip, everything went sideways fast, and right there at the end, my IR light died.